Hello everyone, my name is Sean. I'm a PPMC member of the Apache MXNet project um, and also a senior applied scientist at Amazon AI. I'm really glad to be presenting about Apache MXNet 2.0 in our home base. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank our friends from NVIDIA, especially Vartika and Tristan for their efforts in helping organize this event. I'd also like to thank the program committee, our committer Sam, our PPMC members, Zemek and uh, Dick, and last but not least, all of our presenters and panelists today for this uh, great lineup of programs. So today I'll be talking about uh, Apache MXNet 2, about how it bridges the gap between deep learning and machine learning. So many of the things that I talk about today will have a dedicated talk later. So. I also hope that my talk could serve as a primer for these great presentations, and uh, I'll refer to them during my talk. In today's talk, I'll first share the state of our community, and then we'll take a look at the current landscape of the AI frameworks and examine the fragmentation problem. Afterwards, I'll introduce how MXNet 2 will help bridge the gap caused by the fragmentation. And uh, finally, I'll share an update on the ecosystem of uh, MXNet. First, what is MXNet? MXNet is an Apache incubating project and a deep learning framework. In fact, it's a truly open source deep learning framework built in the Apache way. Later today, Kevin, or KAM, who's an Apache member and the chair emeritus of Spam Assassin Project, will share about the Apache way in more details. Um, it's also a community of deep learning enthusiasts with the goal of democratizing AI. It is a framework that's built to be flexible and efficient and ready for production. Also, it is now a framework that adopts the Python Data API and Onyx standards, which I'll talk about in a bit. There have been 943 code contributors in MXNet, and uh, it has received 19,200 stars and uh, about 7,000 forks. Since joining Apache Incubator, there have been uh, 6,000 commits. It's a deep learning framework that's already trusted by many of the partners in the industry and uh, academia alike. For those who are new, who want to get into closer touch with the developers, you can subscribe to our dev list, which is a mailing list we use for development. You can also connect with our developers on the ASF Slack in the MXNet channel. For those who want to get started in contributing to MXNet, you can also help us on the good first issues that are clearly labeled. Also, um, if you're interested, you may check out our roadmaps for areas that you're interested in. And finally, you can subscribe to our social media channels for news and announcements. So first, let's talk about uh, AI framework fragmentation. So here is uh, an AI open source landscape produced by the Linux AI and Data Foundation. AI is among the fastest growing field that spreads into every industry. The demand for AI talents almost doubles every year since 2015. And similarly, there is an explosion in the diversity of AI tools that touches every aspect of modern day AI in data processing, analysis, and modeling. Because of the high practical value and even higher potential, the industry invests a lot in the AI tooling. You may recognize the logos of many of the popular AI tools here in the picture. So what do I mean by fragmentation? In the context of machine learning and deep learning open source software, what I meant is the lack of interoperability and the lack of common interface design. Such kind of fragmentation causes lock-in of users learning time in learning the API and also the user code base that's integrated with this API. It also forces competition among frameworks and uh, it would also cause excessive efforts for integration for those downstream as third-party developers on these frameworks. 
So how did the uh, deep learning frameworks become separate from machine learning frameworks? One of the main reasons is the different focus and uh, the different design choices. There are many dimensions among which we can make such comparison. So for example, uh, array versus data frame API, deep learning frameworks are usually more focused on array APIs. Also on the choice of precision, since deep learning models have a higher tolerance for low precision, um, while a higher need for speed, um, so half precision could help make such trade-off between precision and speed. Also, there's the Scala, Vector, and Matrix programs, and deep learning frameworks are more focused on the Vector and Matrix programs. Deep learning frameworks also provide automatic differentiation, uh, which is very important for deep learning modeling nowadays. There's also the different uh, programming styles, imperative versus symbolic. Um, and also um, the emphasis on acceleration, such as with GPUs, accelerators, and uh, distributed training. So these are some of the characteristics of um, deep learning frameworks. So let's take a closer look at the key ingredients of uh, deep learning frameworks, which are the array library, automatic differentiation, and also the features for acceleration. First, on the Array API. The modern Array API design is popularized by NumPy starting 15 years ago. And uh, NumPy remains at the core of uh, most of the machine learning and data science projects. And uh, by the way, uh, Ralph Gomers, a uh, maintainer of NumPy and SciPy, and also an author of the work that I'm talking about here, uh, will be presenting about uh, an effort on Array API standardization, uh, which I'll also mention uh, a bit later. So Array API is a combination of um, the data structure as well as its manipulation methods. The data structure consists of the actual data storage, the data type, shape, as well as uh, strides for different data layouts. For manipulation, there are indexing for views and for copies. Um, there's also vectorization for arithmetics, um, broadcasting, as well as uh, reduction methods. Next, uh, let's talk about uh, automatic differentiation. So first, I'd like to share a quote from uh, 2018 Turing Award laureate, uh, Yon Lecon. So he's saying, People are now building a new kind of software by assembling networks of parameterized functional blocks and by training them from examples using some form of gradient-based optimization. So what he's referring to here is differentiable programming and uh, some call it software 2.0. This is what's enabled by automatic differentiation. So let's see what that's about. To build a right uh, mental model, Let's start with uh, the traditional programming. So here we have programmers who hard code the function net that takes in input data with the goal of producing desirable output. So this is just the same old day job of uh, programming. Now suppose that uh, we want to have a computer to tell whether an image depicts a cat or a dog. Or more generally, given some input data, we want to estimate an output. So the logic here is often quite complicated, vague, um, but we have lots of examples. It's usually impossible to write the rules to accomplish this task, but uh, nowadays, since we all know machine learning, uh, we can trade an estimator for it. To do that in deep learning, we feed the image data of the kitty into a network that is parameterized by weights. The network generates a prediction through the weighted sum of the input data and a series of math operations. And uh, on the right-hand side, it produces a score of probability that uh, the image represents a cat or that of a dog. So what automatic differentiation enables is uh, a simple way of describing the differentiable function 
or we call the network and uh, we can produce the prediction from it. And since the program knows every detail about this network, this function, once we know the arrow signal from the output and the choose label, it can automatically generate the gradient in which direction the weights should be adjusted so that um, the output would uh, become closer to the label. Finally, let's uh, look at the need to accelerate compute on modern hardware in deep learning. So the driving factors behind this need are uh, threefold. Uh, it is to train a larger network. It is to train it on more data. And uh, it is to train with faster iterations so that uh, our scientists' time can be better utilized for science and not soared by its own uh, office shares. So uh, let's talk first on uh, the need for larger models. Um, here's a plot for the amount of compute of these uh, well-known deep learning models. And uh, you may recognize some of the, the recent feeds in deep learning here, such as uh, AlphaGo and neural machine translation. So this plot's x-axis is uh, a timeline and the y-axis is the log of petaflops per second times the number of days. Um, it is a, a unit for the amount of compute. Um, since you can see a linear growth in this uh, logarithmic plot uh, over the years, we know that it is growing since 2012 uh, in an exponential way. Next on um, more data. So uh, let's now take a look at the amount of data that human generates every minute. So this is from Domo's series of uh, infographics called uh, Data Never Sleeps. This is the series version. Um, so from the left hand side, you can see that uh, the internet population has grown from 3 billion in 2014 to 4.57 billion in 2020. And every minute there is a deluge of data that is generated across all these different popular applications and services. So for example, every minute on YouTube, as you can see in the top right, it generates over 20 days worth of videos. And finally, let's look at um, the need for acceleration on specialized hardware. So to handle the demand for larger models and more data, compute power has been evolving at a very fast pace. On the left-hand side, you can see this is the plot for the compute power of GPUs over the years. So GPU performance for the top of the line GPU has increased ninefold since 2016. On the right hand side, it's a plot for TPU performance for the TPU v4 compared to the TPU v3 across different models. On average, the performance has improved by 2.7 times. So this is just uh, the improvement for uh, one generation. So deep learning frameworks need to not only keep up with the fast pace in every aspect, but also to um, be able to expect and lead the future. Now that we know that uh, deep learning frameworks evolved independently out of these necessities, still we'd like to overcome these uh, fragmentation problems so that uh, any of the innovation in frameworks can benefit more domains. The solution is through standardization. Here I'd like to mention two standardization efforts in the machine learning and deep learning space that I'm honored to participate in. So the first one is the Python Data API Consortium. The goal of the consortium is to standardize array and data frame APIs to address the fragmentation in these spaces. We assembled a consortium of people from interested companies and the key community contributors to examine the design choices in them and uh, to propose standards that are suitable for modern tools. Um, and uh, by the way, Ralph, uh, as I mentioned, will uh, talk later about standardizing on a single ND array API for Python. And uh, in addition, uh, we'll have a panel discussion on the same topic with several members of the consortium as panelists. We'll discuss about the benefits and opportunities of such standardization, as well as the challenges ahead. Another effort in the deep learning space is uh, Onyx. 
the Open Neural Network Exchange. So it is an effort that started by Facebook and Microsoft. It facilitates the exchange of deep learning models by providing a standard definition of extensible computation graph model, as well as uh, definitions of built-in operators and uh, standard data types. Now that we have a good understanding of the fragmentation problem that we want to overcome, as well as the need in deep learning frameworks, let's look at uh, what we're building in MXNet 2.0 to solve them. Here, I'd like to mention that the work is uh, the result of the collective efforts of over 200 people. And I'd like to thank every one of them who has contributed to this major milestone. In 2.0, we aim to provide a bridge between NumPy-based machine learning and deep learning frameworks. The two most notable features are the NumPy-compatible programming as well as the Gluon 2.0. In the NumPy-compatible programming, we provide NumPy-compatible array library with the enhancement of automatic differentiation and the GPU acceleration. We provide them in two modules. Um, the MP module is aimed to be compatible with the definitions uh, of operators in NumPy, whereas the MPX module is an extension specifically designed for neural networks. In Gluon 2.0, we simplified the high-level programming so that um, now the definition of neural networks are done in the same way as if you're writing a NumPy program. The goal overall is to make deep learning and machine learning fast and flexible. Here's an example of such combination. We write the neural networks from the cat and dog example in just uh, a few lines of code. So um, in the blue box, uh, you can see that uh, overall the, the network class is implemented in the Gluon 2.0 with a high level abstraction. Um, and in the forward computation, you can see that uh, the, the operations are done with the NumPy compatible interface. We also use the mpx.softmax, which is uh, a neural network extension to NumPy. So as you can see, with uh, just a few lines of code, we can put together such an example um, that is uh, very straightforward and easy to understand. Gluon's JIT, which we call hybridization, can optimize and export NumPy and uh, neural network models to the bindings of different programming languages. It can be deployed through TVM, TRT, and uh, OpenVINO, and uh, we can port that to all operating systems. It can also be exported to uh, Onyx so that it interfaces with uh, the whole ecosystem that's built around Onyx. We can also integrate with Apache 95. Uh, Timothy Spann will present about uh, using Apache MXNet in production in streaming pipelines uh, with uh, Apache 95. And also, uh, Tian Chi Chen will share about uh, Apache TVM and machine learning compilation later today. In 2.0, we make it easier to customize MXNet by offering many ways of defining custom operators and also ways of plugging in custom accelerators. And uh, Sam Scality and uh, Serge Panet uh, will share about them in uh, more details in their talk today. So we can use these features now to extend MXNet for um, custom operations and the better performance. We also support uh, using TVM to uh, write custom operators. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see a comparison example. So the top right, the shorter piece of code is written in Python with uh, TVM. So as you can see, compared to the bottom left, C++ operator that's written in MXNet, uh, it is uh, a lot more concise and uh, conciseness would uh, help developers to develop more efficiently. In 2.0, we also have various improvements. So there are a bunch of them in terms of performance. For example, Dick Carter would talk about uh, CUDA graph support uh, later today. 
and uh, Zemek uh, would share about um, the history and the future of uh, runtime compilation in MXNet, and also ways to gain the ultimate framework efficiency. Vladimir uh, would share about uh, MXNet AMP support for the 2.0. Um, also, we now uh, added support for A100, and also we're enhancing the support for ARM. Manu Seth would um, share about uh, ARM in his talk, A Call to ARMS. In terms of usability, we also improved it in various ways. Rohit and Zhao Qi would share about large tensor support today in their talk. In terms of offering higher performance and lower cost, I'd like to share some results that are achieved with MXNet. The first one is uh, MLPerf 0.7. MLPerf is the standard benchmark in deep learning with very strict competition rules. And uh, MXNet is used in 23 out of the 52 available on-premise uh, submissions um, in the recent 0.7 release. Um, most notably, on image classification on ImageNet with ResNet 50, NVIDIA achieved a 46-second training time with 1,000 840 uh, A100 GPUs. Um, also, Intel achieved an 18 minute, 24 second training time with just um, eight of the Intel Xeon Platinum 8380H CPUs. Also, for uh, object detection on um, MS Coco with SSD, NVIDIA achieved a 49 second training time with 1024 A100 GPUs. These great feats are uh, a good show of um, the advancements in computation for deep learning. Um, also, uh, we now integrate with uh, formerly MKLDNN. Now it's called the uh, 1DNN with uh, the CPU acceleration from Intel. And later today, Adam from Intel will share about optimizing inference on CPU in MXNet 2.0. As an example for offering lower cost for deep learning, GlonoP recently achieves BERT real-time inference for 1 million requests for only 20 cents. So for those who are unfamiliar with it, BERT is a breakthrough work on natural language understanding that combines transformer-based architecture and the self-supervised learning plus fine-tuning paradigm. It is a, a large model that requires a lot of compute. So for example, it can uh, perform very complex sentiment analysis tasks, such as the one shown on the right. So even though in this uh, book review, it says great. Um, great for insomniacs means that uh, it makes people sleepy, which is not a, a good property for a book. So um, on a benchmark of um, such natural language understanding tasks, which is called glue, um, it uh, first achieved superhuman performance. So Moises, who drove this work on reducing the cost for BERT inference, uh, will share about his work uh, later today. Last but not least, let me introduce the ecosystems of um, MXNet. Uh, first is uh, Autogluon. So AutoGluon is an AutoML tool that enables automatic machine learning with just three lines of code. It automatically ensembles various models and performs hyperparameter optimization. Um, as shown in the table, um, on 11 Kaggle competitions, compared to other AutoML tools, AutoGluon performs the best on several of them uh, with the least time. So Jonas uh, would um, uh, have a talk today to share about Autogluon. Another project uh, which is called uh, Dive Into Deep Learning. Uh, it's a deep learning book with the perfect combination of sharing knowledge and uh, hands-on practice. It is a book that's written as Jupyter Notebooks to help build a solid foundation in deep learning. And uh, combined with an active community of learners that help each other, it's a perfect uh, environment for people who want to get started in deep learning. And uh, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, also highly recommends it. 
This book is used in more than 100 universities worldwide as a, a textbook for teaching deep learning and machine learning. And uh, half of the top 30 universities already use uh, D2L. And uh, Gluon CV is a versatile deep learning for computer vision toolkit that provides training and deployment for a wide range of tasks. It includes uh, image classification, detection, segmentation, action recognition, and uh, post estimation. Shi is a, a BPMC member of MXNet. Um, he will share more of uh, the amazing work in uh, Gluon CV in his talk later today. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, Gluon CV now um, has support for uh, various video-based tasks. Uh, for one here, uh, you can see the MonoDepth 2, which is for uh, depth estimation. And uh, it now also supports uh, various uh, generative adversarial networks for image generation tasks. Another great uh, computer vision toolkit I'd like to highlight is Insight Face. It's a deep learning toolkit for face analysis that provides implementations and pre-trained state-of-the-art models. The two killer features uh, in uh, Insight Face are uh, the Arc Face, which is for uh, face recognition, and also the uh, award-winning Retina Face model for face localization. So Insight Face is a, a famous and already widely used toolkit in both academia and the industry. It aims to become the center for innovation in deep face analysis. In NLP, um, Gluon NLP provides training and deployment for a wide variety of uh, natural language tasks, such as translation, text classification, natural language inference, and uh, uh, text generation. Uh, it offers over a thousand pre-trained models and the low cost as I shared before. In the next major version, Gluon LP will provide a NumPy-based implementation and also offers more backbones and easier to tweak data processing tools. Gluon LP focuses on the industry and powers many of the AWS NLP services as well as um, Alexa's natural language understanding. Um, Xing Jian uh, will share the latest updates from Gluon LP later today. Another great NLP toolkit is uh, Sockeye 2.0. It is a sequence to sequence toolkit that specializes in translation. It provides state of the art translation models that powers Amazon Translate. In the latest version, um, it uh, integrates with the Gluon API that um, is implemented with 25% uh, fewer lines while achieving a 14% increase in training speed. The faster model training is achieved with AMP and Horobot. And also, um, Sakai offers a faster, 3.4 times faster translation with their work with 8-bit um, quantized matrix multiplication. And uh, Branson will share uh, how he optimized the inference of uh, Neural Machine Translation in Sokai 2 later today. Gluon TS is a deep learning for time series toolkit that powers Amazon Forecast. It is designed to be modular and scalable with uh, production stability. You can mix different modules of distributions and probabilistic components, as well as uh, neural network structures for different approaches in time series modeling. Danielle's uh, presentation on this uh, great work in Gluon TS uh, would be available for viewing today. And finally, Deep Graph Library, or DGL, is a flexible graph neural network toolkit. It is widely adopted in the research community and it has really high performance. It also offers domain specific tools for knowledge graph embedding as well as life science in chemistry and biology. So with that, um, I thank you all for listening to my talk. And uh, if you want to get involved with the developer community, um, again, here are the various ways that you can stay connected with us. Thank you.